FFmpeg has got to be in the top three inventions of all time. It's up there with penicillin, which like saved so many countless lives, and the wheel, which revolutionized the cheese storage industry. FFmpeg's biggest use case is converting between multimedia files. So for instance, if you have like an MP4 and you want to rip the audio out of it, you can do that. But it's also highly extensible and you can use it to take screenshots and do pretty much any kind of conversion you can imagine. It's also capable of really complicated scripting. I have some simple scripts that just grab screenshots of code for me and one that records for me. And it just auto saves. And you can control so much about it it has multiple like input sources. You can actually stream straight from your webcam into a file. One of the most embarrassing things you can do in a developer workflow is go to one of those websites like png2jpeg.com because it just shows that you never learned about FFmpeg because this is like a trivial one-liner like this. Um, and I just use that all the time to convert between things. It's really nice for like weirder file types. Like you can do Photoshop to TIFF to PNG, great at like swapping color channels and stuff to go from all the different image formats. It's super quick and it often compresses things to like 80% of the size that they normally were. To install FFmpeg, just open up your computer because there's a good chance it's already installed. You're probably thinking, can I use this to talk to girls by converting plain text to something that they'll actually enjoy? No, because that's a proprietary codec and it's controlled by Tinder and it's a critical part of their infrastructure. It's used under the hood by pretty much every major company that has to process any kind of video or audio in any way. And basically all video editors are just FFmpeg. If you're wondering how I made that screen recorder little program thing, it's very simple Lua code. Basically I have this local function and it expands the current file name and then it takes a simplified version of the date and then it just puts them together and then it puts that in my movies directory, which is just on, on Mac by default where stuff is kind of saved. And then the FFmpeg command itself, I'm just storing in a string. And what it does is it's just grabbing from AV Foundation, which is like the Mac's like screen recording thing. I think it's some other, it's like X11 server or something on Linux. And then it's capturing it at 30 frames per second. Let me wrap real quick. Um, at 1920 by 1080 just so it's good resolution and then i'm doing a little bit of text sharpening afterwards to make it appear better on youtube and then if i unset wrap because it'll look kind of weird it's still a work in progress i'm still trying to figure out the best way to do this um yeah then it's just saved and i actually saved the job id as a global variable that way i can um, stop it later and then the little menu you saw before is with telescope I actually create a new picker with the different these different functions and then it just like lets me go through them if you wanted to record something else you can choose exactly like how to center and um, where the output file is and all these kind of filters. I'm just like scratching the surface of it. There are real pros who've been doing it for years and years. The API is somewhat reminiscent of the ravings of the insane. I'm usually pretty against generative AI, but I think in this case that it's good to have a helping hand when you want to do something. And because it's like such an old and such an embedded tool and everything, most AI models will be able to give you pretty good answers on how to write little FFmpeg scripts. Um, but it also does have pretty good documentation and you can really like the basic conversions are awesome but you can have insane workflows with it people like can make i mean you can really do anything with it the possibilities are actually endless except for the girl thing that is off limits